my dear sisters, my dear brothers, my dear children, my dear young people, welcome to the reflection and the readings of the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are doing this reflection in St. Andrew's Cemetery in Bratislava. For our help, as our aid to remember what we want to reflect about, we will take a word hope. It appears in the second reading where St. Paul is saying that brothers and sisters, I do not want you to grieve over the dead ones as pagans, as Gentiles do, who have no hope. And we will assign to each letter a particular word, a particular thought that will allow us to reflect on death, on eternal life, and on the hope that Jesus teaches us about. The first letter is letter H. And I picked a word hindrance, hindrance as an obstacle. When we reflect on death, particularly death of us people, of human beings, it is a frightening thought for many because we are encountering something unknown. We may have experienced death, uh, perhaps only uh, with our uh, close friends or relatives, and we know how difficult it is to go through such period. Paul, St. Paul, who was writing to Thessalonians, uh, was not telling uh, these people, don't grieve, don't be sad, don't express any kind of emotions. But he is telling them, when you grieve, do not grieve like people who have no hope. So don't allow the experience of death or even the emotions that are associated with it uh, to rob you of the faith that we received from our Lord, from Jesus, who is telling us, yes, this our mortal body will end one day. It will be buried, but it is destined for resurrection. And Paul makes uh, this analogy, as Jesus has died, we will die. As Jesus has risen, we will rise. So may the faith in our Lord's example who walked the same path will be a source of our strength that when we imitate him we will experience what Jesus has shown to his disciples to his apostles and to everyone who believe and trust in him the second letter in the word hope is letter O and we can think of oil Oil was mentioned in the Gospel reading, Jesus speaking about ten bridesmaids or ten virgins, five who were wise ones, five who were foolish. And this Gospel passage is interesting from two standpoints. The traditional understanding of what the oil in the lamp uh, means that uh, it is oil of faith, oil of love, uh, acts of charity, oil of repentance, oil of prayers. But uh, in one reflection, there was a very interesting observation that why did the five foolish virgins stayed out of the gate and were not able to enter the celebration of the wedding that represents heaven, that represents uh, the eternal life in union with God, that they were so preoccupied with oil that they forgot who the groom is. If they would have only not left the gate and told the groom, we ran out of the oil, please take us in. We do not have an oil, but we have hands that we can help out. We have hearts that will love you. Would this groom would Jesus say, no, you have wasted your life. You have not uttered one prayer. You have not done anything good. There are people who come to know Jesus at the very end, but they wait at the gate for the groom. So yes, 
oil is oil of faith. Every drop of oil is a good thought, a good word, good deed that we do out of love for God and for neighbor. Let's collect as much oil for our Lord. But even if we are lacking, let's bring him our lamp and our love and our trust. The third letter in the word hope is letter P. Prepare. In uh, this, the third letter in the word hope is letter P. Prepare. Already, when we spoke about the oil, we recognize that preparing ourselves for entering into eternal life, for death, does require having faith and trust in Jesus. Is an invitation uh, to express our faith in a practical acts of charity and repentance. But let us not neglect also uh, to think about the preparation of our last will or so-called testament, both the material one as well the spiritual one. The material one in uh, uh, which we really assign our material possessions to our family members, to our parish or parishes or communities, to missions or to various charitable organizations. So they would be able to benefit if we have something left so they could continue in their noble or work of evangelization or ministering to the poor and needy. How many unfortunate quarrels between family members when the last will and the testament is not put in order. But let's also consider uh, leaving and preparing a spiritual testament, a spiritual last will. Of course, the most important one is by the way we live our lives, by the way we forgive uh, generously, and by the, will, uh, by the way uh, we uh, are encouraging others to make peace with one another and with God. I was so blessed to have a grandmother who was repeating uh, at the end of her life that I am not afraid of dying. I am convinced that my guardian angel will take me by one hand and Blessed Mother, Blessed Virgin Mary by the other hand. And we are going together to Jesus because the guardian angel's joy is to bring me to Jesus and leave me in heaven, not just merely being judged and sending me to eternal damnation. And how would Blessed Mother refuse to take me to Jesus if I am praying to her every day? Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Pray for me, a sinner, now and at the hour of our, at the hour of my death. So let's prepare. Our final letter is letter E, eternally with Jesus. Being for eternity with God, for eternity uh, with Jesus is such a difficult concept to comprehend. Uh, when I was little, uh, we had a certain analogy uh, for some, it may be perhaps uh, a little bit funny, but it did help me as a child. And in, in this analogy, uh, we as a kids were called uh, to picture our favorite beach, whether it is here in Slovakia or in Italy, in France, in Mexico, or anywhere in the world. And on this beach, there is a small bird who takes one grain of sand and flies to the top of the Mount Everest and doesn't freeze there. And it takes him enormously long time, like one million years, uh, to fly there and drop that one grain of sand. And then he flies on another million years to go back to that be beach and flies back and forth all those million years, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And in this story, when the bird comes for the last time, uh, to the beach and takes the final grain of sand and it's completely clean and drops it to the Mount Everest for the last time. And uh, Mount Everest thus becoming even taller, 
in this story it is said this is just the beginning of eternity so how long is eternity we do not know and we do not need to count the time or think how bored we will be because this is that huge surprise that Jesus promised to us that whoever follows him whoever will love him will be living the fullness of life that's why I love to repeat whenever we are in the cemetery or whenever we contemplate the uh, eternal life the famous words of Paul, St. Paul, the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, the human heart cannot comprehend what God prepared for those who love him. H, hindrance, O, oil, P, prepare, and E, eternally with Jesus.